Hey guys, I'm CG Smoothie and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Today we'll be talking about the animation rigging pipeline and how to make hand inverse kinematics. So what are inverse kinematics? Well, as opposed to forward kinematics, which calculates the tip bone position by the rotation of all the other bones in the system, inverse kinematics calculates the rotation of all the bones in the system due to the position of the tip bone, as shown in this diagram here. Because it uses the tip bone's position, this makes it easier to align things like your character's hand to terrain or an object, or your character's feet to the terrain underneath them. In this episode, we'll be tackling hand IK specifically, so if you want, or if you already have a character, go to Mixamo and download a character with an animation. I'll be downloading the Ybot and a walking animation. And then just add that to your scene. Your project, make sure in your package manager, you have the animation rigging package added to this specific instance of Unity. I already have it, as you can see. Now, you're going to add the new character that you just added. Here he is. I'm gonna zoom the camera in a little bit. All right, so now that you have your character, let's go to animation rigging up here in the top left and then create a bone renderer setup on this model. And then you're going to want to create a rig setup. So the bone renderer will let you see all of the bones in your armature and then be able to select them just by clicking on them in the model, which is if you didn't have it, you would just be clicking the model itself, and that wouldn't be as helpful, especially if it's rigged with weight painting instead of individual assigning of vertexes. So here, I added this new rig, let's call it Hand IK Rig, and then underneath, we'll put a new empty, and we'll call it Right Hand IK. Now here is where you can decide, it depends on if your character has multiple bones like if it's like a rubber hose kind of animated character or if it's more of an anatomically correct character like this because mine's anatomically correct i'll be doing two bone ik constraint but if you have a wackier design you might want to skip forward to this timestamp to learn about chain ik but i would recommend watching both so that you have a deeper understanding of why everything works the way it does. So for two bone IK, we're going to add component, animation rigging, two bone IK constraint. Here, it'll show you a bunch of settings that you can manipulate in the two bone IK constraint. Weight will determine how much the rig is actually affected by this constraint. I would keep it at one, but if you have multiple systems, like one that tracks hand on an object, but one that tracks hand on the terrain, like if they need to grab a wall like in Metroid Dread or something. I'm just going to keep it at one for now. You would probably dynamically change it in code if you wanted to switch between two rigs. In the root, we're going to choose the root node, which would usually be the bone right after the shoulder. So. There's the right arm, right forearm, and then right hand, so we would take the right arm. I would lock the inspector so that it doesn't change your view every time you select a bone. So here you can select the right arm, put that as the root, uh, right forearm as mid, and right hand as tip. So here for the source objects, you could make game objects for your source objects right now, or you could go here and auto set up from tips transform, which will add to objects just as is, and it'll be quicker. Let's give those two objects a little indicator in the viewport here. I'm gonna give them a ball effector and scale up the radius a little bit. The target will be red and the hint will be blue and a little smaller. Okay, now target, we're going to want to align the transform to the hand. So click the target first, then control click the hand to select them both. And then an animation rigging, align the transform. That'll bring the rotation and position of that target object to the hand bone. And then for hint, we're going to want to align it with the elbow. So click the hint and then click the elbow and align transform and then probably bring it back a little bit. The hint object will 
align the elbow so that it points the correct way when you are using this rig. So now that we have that, there's additional settings that can change how much certain things affect the rig. So you can have it only be affected by position, so rotation doesn't matter. Or you can have it affect both, or you can have it only affect rotation. Or you can have it only affect scale. But I would, I, for this rig, would only maintain, I would maintain all of it. And then these ones can change how much the position is affecting, and how much the rotation is affecting and how much the elbow is affected by this hint. Now that we have that in your animator, make sure you make a controller for your character. I'll do that here. And then in the animator, we're going to want to assign that as the controller. And then animator, make sure that your uh, walking animation is the first state. And you can get that animation from your prefab that you brought in. Now, if we go into animation and we preview it and play it, you should see the hand stays still. It might be a little buggy because of how the animation works. I would probably in code make the vertical position affected by the root bone so that it gives like the up and down movement of the hips because that's how it would work in real life. You don't usually keep your hand completely stable when you're holding something, but if you can see here, you can move the bone all around and it works in real time. If it goes too far, it'll just do as close as it can with the rig. But I would try to keep it in the bounds of your character's anatomy to make it more realistic. And then as you can see, the rotation affects the rig as well. As you can see, the hand is moving side to side when I rotate it. and this hint bone will rotate the elbow, as you can see. So uh, now you could parent or you could add a child game object to this target and have it look like it's actually holding an object. Like if I added a cylinder right here and put it around its hand, then it would look like he's actually holding the cylinder. And there's a little example of what this could be used for. All right, so now for chain IK. If you, I'm just gonna copy this object just so that we have multiple of them. And you can turn off the weight of this one so that it's only affected by the new one. If you wanted to track both and see which one your character works better with, now remove this constraint and add a new component. We'll call this chain IK. And what this will do, it doesn't have as much control as the two bone IK if you have two bones because the elbows won't really work as well. So if you have something that needs like an elbow or a knee, something that specifically comes out like a knee or an elbow, I would stick with two bone IK. Um, but if you have something like in one of my newer games, I have an emu that uses its head to drive a cart in a cart racer I made. I would use, I think I did use chain IK to control the neck so that it like linearly interpolated the entire model so that it looked like an emu neck. Or if you had like a snake, that could be a good thing to use. Like if it was lunging out at something. So. Chain IK. We don't need this hint because chain IKs do not use hint objects. We can just also disable this object for now, the old IK. For root and tip, if you weren't following along, we use the tip is the hand because that's going to be the tip of what is affected by the IK. So lock this panel in and then grab the hand bone, assign that as the tip. And then the root will be the farthest the IK goes. So as close to the shoulder as you want, but because I don't really think the shoulder should be affected by where your hand is going. If you move your hand around, you can see your shoulder doesn't really change anything. Only your arm does anything. So I will take this bone 
and assign that as the root. And the target, if we add a game object and then call that right hand IK target, then if you click that bone and then control click the right hand and then an animation rigging align transform if we want a little gizmo so that we can see this in the inspector. Add a little ball effector and scale that to 0.3 in size. Now you can see it aligns to the transform and rotation of the hand bone. And then we'll just assign that as the target. These settings are used to determine how much everything is affected. But for iterations, we're only gonna wanna use however many bones are in the amount affected. So for my case, you have the hand bone and then you have the forearm and then the whole arm. So that is two bones because there's only two bones in between the hand and the shoulder. So the iterations should only be two. And then if you preview this animation and play it, you can move the target around and it will work correctly. So yeah, and it is affected by rotation. As you can see, it, it will let me rotate. The hand is affected by the target object's rotation. So yeah, that's hand IK. Now that you have this set up, you can adjust things like weights in the code to have dynamic procedural systems for holding objects, interacting with the environment, or even interacting with other players. If you, for instance, wanted a high five or hugging emo in a multiplayer game. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'll probably be doing other tutorials around the animation rigging package later on this year, so stay tuned. If you guys would like to see something specific, let me know down in the comments and I can try to figure something out. Make sure to subscribe if you're interested with this type of content, as I have many other tutorials you might want to see and only 0.7% of my audience is subscribed. So even if just a little bit of you guys subscribed, it would help this content to be pushed out massively. Also, you can check out my Discord in the description down below to join a neat community of people who do Blender and Unity and show off your work for feedback. With that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.